Welcome friends. We are your hosts, Sandy and Wade, baby best friends turned husband and wife and business partners. This podcast is for the dreamers, the movers and shakers, and those who seek to attract their dream life. Strap in, getting magnetic in three, two, one. Like attracts like. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. This moment in time, this is your time to rise. Oh, shoot. I got to get to work. I'm going to be late. Babe, don't forget your backpack. Does that sound familiar? So this totally used to be us. And on today's episode, we are so excited. We're going to actually talk about something that has honestly altered the course of our life, how we start our day, what we refer to as our miracle morning. We're going to go through our morning routine, where we got it from. And by the end of this episode, you should feel energized to create your own miracle morning and ultimately own your morning, own your day and own your life. I think it's so important. Those first 20 minutes of the day are really going to dictate how your whole day goes. So are you starting your day with immediately checking text messages, checking emails, opening up social media platforms, and really not knowing what's coming your way? Or are you being intentional about it? Before we jump into what our routine looks like and how you can implement your own, we want to share with you how we first discovered and ultimately implemented a morning routine of our own. So excited. Okay, rewind. Before we even dive into today, I need to stop and do a quick shout out to our man, Chase Mitchell. This podcast literally would not exist without him. He has his company, Upstarter Podcast Network. And if you are a content creator, if you want to create a podcast without having to deal with all the nitty gritty details, that's something Wade and I definitely didn't want to deal with of editing and all the things. He deals with all the technical details. You can join the Upstarter Podcast Network and have a show just like this. You check him out on Instagram at Upstarter Podcast pods or reach out on upstarterpods at gmail.com. Chase is amazing. Our podcast would not be where it is. I don't even think it would honestly exist if it weren't for him and all his efforts. So go check it out. So back to me running out the door with no time to spare. Going to walk you through a little bit about what our mornings look like before we actually discovered and implemented our own morning routine. And ultimately, it was through a book called Miracle Morning, which we'll, we'll discuss a little bit later. But when we lived in Boston a few years ago, I actually, we lived in an apartment in the city together and my office was actually outside of the city. So I actually took a boat to work, which was really cool. But before, you know, I would get on the boat, I would set an alarm, I would wake up with barely any time to spare to just to get dressed. I would usually snooze my alarm actually. And then I wouldn't have any time in the morning with Sandy and I would get dressed and I would scramble out the door. I'd usually forget some, I'd grab my backpack, and I would start walking to the boat. And it was about a 12 minute walk, beautiful through the city. But oftentimes what I found that walk would turn into a jog halfway through to make sure I made the boat at 8.30 a.m. And then even on some occasions, I would actually, the boat would be leaving and I would actually time it so perfectly that I had to jump onto the boat. There was like a four foot gap and they were unhooked and they were like, they knew me. So every day I would be there and they were like, oh my gosh, wait again. And I would jump onto the boat. But I literally timed everything to like the last second from snoozing my alarm and waking up. And it was just, it wasn't what I wanted. Maybe this is why so many of your pants have rips in the crotch. (laughs) (laughs) That could be right. Yes. Yes, I, a lot of my pants have ribs in the crotch. I don't know why, but I think Sandy just discovered. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, babe. But then, okay, so then I'm on the boat, right? And I just feel flustered. And guess what? When you wake up and you get into this and you start like stressing out, it actually releases a stress hormone called cortisol. So at this point, I have cortisol pumping, pulsing through my veins, and I'm sitting on the boat and I'm honestly sweating, whether it was summer or winter, I am breaking out in a sweat. And that's the start of my day. Chaos, like organized, timed chaos. It was crazy. So then I'd be sitting on the boat, you know, beautiful boat ride on the water, but I'd immediately get into checking my phone, checking texts, responding to people, checking emails, responding, putting out fires, you know, maybe listening to some music in the background with some headphones. 
where I'm immediately then solving other people's problems and responding to other people. I now am like an hour into my day, maybe by the time I get to work, and I have no time for myself, like none at all. And I realized this, I'm like, you know, what am I doing after you do it enough? What you know, what we typically say and what one of our late great mentors, Jim Rohn says, for things that change, you've got to make a change. So started by substituting, you know, putting out fires, texts, emails, social media on my phone, and listening to music to educational podcasts, honestly, to people that I really look up to. And I want to give a shout out to the Model Health Show and Sean Stevenson, Tony Robbins, Eric Thomas, Lewis Howes, JLD, Mark Sisson, Oprah, so many more people that just put out such good content. And I started to fill my mind with, whoa, development, with learning, with personal development and growth and learning things about health and business and life in general and from a lot of successful people. And in this journey of in the podcast world, I came across a guy on a podcast. His name was Hal Elrod. The rest was history. (laughs) No, but he, like myself, was always fascinated by successful people. And he really studied their habits, what they did, what they ate, what were the daily habits that culminated in success for them. And he looked for patterns. He realized they all woke up early. We've heard that before. They were generally healthy. They were driven. So many more things. But he realized it all started in the morning. So he dove into what their mornings looked like. He came up with a morning routine that is based off of what many, many successful people do. And he put it all into one incredible morning routine. So we're going to dive into what that routine looks like, how we've kind of adopted it and, and what our morning routine looks like. And for further depth on the subject, highly, highly recommend checking out his book, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. But that was kind of what started us. So I come back and I'm like, babe, I just read this book. We got to do this miracle morning routine. And I started implementing some of the stuff, which we'll go into later. But at first, I think Sandy's kind of like, what are you talking about? It's so funny. Sometimes when your spouse tells you to do something, it's like, "Mm, no, thanks. I'm good. (laughs) And so Wade came back with this idea and was like, we should start waking up early and we should start doing this and that. And I'm like, you should do that. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You should do that. (laughs) And it's like, and he would be like, we should start meditating. We should start doing this and that. And I'm like, yeah, you should do that. Like, I don't want you to tell me what to do. But it's like deep down, I kind of knew he was right. And it's so funny because you just mentioned Jim Rohn. I think he's also the one that says, don't wish that it was easier, wish that you were better. Right? Yes, yes. And that's so powerful because it's not easy to wake up early. And if you're not a morning person, like really make those changes. But it's so doable. And we're living proof. So you know what? I'm just going to say, I'm going to get magnetic right now and manifest that we are going to have Hal on our podcast as a guest someday. Ooh, I like that. Getting magnetic there. That is totally happening. <laughs> Let's make it happen. We just put that out into the universe. Okay. So we're going to walk you guys through our morning and total credit to Hal here in his book, The Miracle Morning. He goes through what he calls the life savers. S-A-B-E-R-S. And they each stand for something. And so we're going to go back and forth between Wade and I and share what those things are. So before we dive into our miracle morning routine and the savers, we actually do a few things before we get into that. The very first thing we do, Sandy and I generally wake up at the same time every day. And the first thing we do is make our bed. You guys may have heard before, but U.S. Navy Admiral General William McRaven is an awesome commencement speech. It's called Always Make Your Bed. And he says, you want to change the world? Start with making your bed. And it essentially means, you know, when you make your bed to start your day, you've already accomplished something to start your day. You have a sense of accomplishment. And then at the end of the day, whether you had an awesome day or a bad day, you come home to a made bed. So that is the first thing we do. I'm going to stop you right there while we're talking about beds. Okay, so I want to talk about our mattress for a second because it's just so incredible. And I feel like people need to know. So Wade and I sleep on an avocado mattress. And this is a non-toxic, it's made out of organic cotton. It's actually a vegan mattress. And when you think about it, you spend one third of your life sleeping. So it's really important to be aware of what you're sleeping on. So many mattresses are made out of toxic glues and materials and fabrics and things. And you're breathing that in and ultimately it's just not great for you. So when we bought this house and we were looking to get a new mattress, we did some research and we found avocado mattress. So if you want to get your hands on your own avocado mattress, check out the link in the show notes. 
that I remember was an easy sell for me. And now it's like one of the best investments we've made. You're so right. We spent a third of our life there and we'll probably have it for decades, right? I mean, how long does a mattress last? It is also super comfy. Amazing. Uh, so anyways, we make our bed first thing in the morning. Then we go, we brush our teeth. Dental hygiene, super important. And actually, pro tip, you know when you brush your teeth, they're sort of on autopilot in the morning? Say you're right-handed. If you actually change to your left hand and brush your teeth, it's going to feel funky and awkward, but you start to notice it. You're more aware. You're in the present. And it actually starts firing off the right side of your brain, the creative side of your brain. So try that too. But then we go from there and we go and we hydrate. Hydration is key. You dehydrate overnight. You are sleeping. You don't drink you know, for hours and hours. And it's very important to take an inner bath. Get your organs hydrated, get everything on your insides hydrated. So we actually drink alkaline water in the morning. And we'll probably do a deeper dive into that on a later episode, right? I think we should. Yeah, I we drink 9.5 pH alkaline water. Every yeah, day. and it's incredible. And we've noticed amazing results. But beyond that, you could also add lemon, Celtic sea salt, get some minerals in it, get some lemon in it. So then from there, we've made our bed, we've brushed our teeth, we've gotten hydrated. We jump into the life savers. So the first you know, letter of savers, the first thing we do is silence. S stands for silence. So silence generally meaning you know, sitting, potentially meditating, maybe praying, whatever it is. It's just basically sitting in silence, being still, being you know, in your thoughts, trying to slow down your thoughts and minds and just being present. What we've adopted, what we've found most effective is meditating. And we aren't meditation pros, so we use a guided app. We use the Calm app, or we find you know a meditation on YouTube from someone that we really like. Recently, we've been listening to a Gabby Bernstein one. It's five minutes. It's about abundance, and just it's incredible. But the Calm app also has ten minute guided meditations, and there's no time amount that's perfect. You know, maybe five minutes, maybe ten minutes, maybe two minutes. It depends how much time you have allotted towards your miracle morning. We should actually you know, touch on that too. A miracle morning can be anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour or beyond. It's up to you. But we think it's important to hit on all these things. So that silence is getting still with yourself. It's centering yourself. You've probably heard before, a lot of successful people meditate, they're centering themselves, they're getting present. And what I have found for me personally, and Cindy, you could probably speak on it too, is it makes me more patient throughout the day. It makes me more patient in life. It makes me more aware and coming back to it, it makes me more present just each and day in, day out. I will add to that too and say silence could also be prayer. It could be breathing. It could just be taking some time to focus on your breathing. Yes. How many seconds it's coming in, how many seconds you're holding it, how many seconds you're exhaling. But it's just taking a few moments to intentionally be silent and one with yourselves. So that's the first one. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to go into the second one. A stands for affirmations. And this has been a total game changer for us. So there's actually a few things I want to go through with this. So I'm going to start with I am statements. So I am are a couple of the most powerful words that you can say, because the words that immediately precede that is what you are basically affirming, right? It's basically what you are, I guess, attracting into your life. Are you saying... I am overweight. I am unable to achieve my goals. I am, you know, are you saying those types of things or are you saying I'm fearless? I am unstoppable. I am an incredible leader. Right. And so I think, you know, we we recently heard this statistic from a friend, something about how our brain is on autopilot of, I think 80% of our thoughts are negative and like 90% of them are on repeat. That stat is probably totally wrong, but it was something like that where I was like, wow, that's a lot of negativity, right? So we need to intentionally reprogram our brain to be positive. So every morning I go into my office, Wade goes into his office. We both have like a designated song that we love that we play quietly in the background. Mine is Surrender by Natalie Taylor. Mine is One Man Can Change the World by Big Sean. So we'll have those play. Like, so we both, after we do our meditation, we both go to our offices and I play that song and he plays his songs. We go through our affirmations. And I used to have mine on sticky notes all over my mirror. I actually recently changed it to like note cards, but I'm going to take you guys through what I say every single morning. Now, some of these things are true and have already happened. And some of them are things that I want to attract into my life. And so I say them every day so that, you know, your brain really doesn't know the difference between 
you saying I am something if you are or not, right? So it's kind of just your brain's going to condition itself and it's going to be like, I'm not a liar. So it's going to start believing these things and acting as if. So there's way more science behind this. And we're definitely not like scientists and we're not providing all that stuff for you guys at this point. But we've done a lot of research and we've listened to so many things and read so many things and we found this to be true in our life. So I'm going to take you through my I am statements. I think the premise of it is like, our thoughts become our words, become our actions and our conscious and our subconscious mind, our programs start to program by our thoughts and our words and our actions. And we work to make it come true both consciously and subconsciously. So it's pretty, pretty powerful. And back to what Sandy said, what are you telling yourself? Negative things or positive things? So I love Sandy is my inspiration and a lot of people's inspiration on affirmations. So I'm, I always get inspired when, when I hear Sandy doing hers in the morning. Okay. So here we go. I am growing a healthy baby inside of me. I am giving all natural birth. I am eternally grateful for this pregnancy. I am an amazing mom. I was made for this. I am building a lasting legacy for future generations to come. I am a wonderful wife to Wado. I am strong. I am at peace. I am joyful every day. I am walking in my purpose. I am continuously becoming a better me. I am a powerful force for good. I am surrounded by an abundance of opportunities. I am teachable. I am a loyal, loving, and trustworthy friend. I'm giving myself grace and learning from my mistakes. I am humble and I know what I bring to the table. I am a money magnet. I love money and money loves me. I am showing them what's possible with a decided heart. I am a leader worth following. I am the leader of a massive and thriving global organization. I'm enjoying the career of my dreams. I am creating lucrative opportunities for others. I am living an amazing life with my wonderful life partner. I am brave and willing to take risks. I am living my dream life. I am grateful for where I am. I am using my gifts every day. I am attracting happy people into my life. I am an overcomer. I am open to creative solutions. I am impeccable with my word. I am a magnet for miracles and expect the unexpected. I'm a business building and enrolling magnet. I'm working towards making six figures per month by early 2021. I am making mom proud every day. I am welcoming a steady flow of abundance into my life. I am a unique woman with great ideas. I am a heart-led leader. I am living a life I once dreamt of having. I am the ordinary girl that decided to go for it. I am so grateful our journal is helping so many network marketers. One million copies sold. I am feeling the fear and doing it anyway. I am showing people how to step into their greatness. I am an executor. When I say I'm going to do something, I always follow through. I'm attracting the right people into my life and business. I am an amazing daughter. I am a great sister and a loving auntie. I am confident and creative. I am present in the now. My yes is changing the world. I am proud of myself. All right. So those are my I am statements that I say every day. So powerful. It takes me about three minutes, which is about the length of the song, but it's super powerful. Sometimes I'll even go through it a couple rounds. So those are what I do personally, but also want to, you know, on this podcast, we want to talk about all things. We want to talk about love. We want to talk about life. We want to talk about business. And a big part of what Wade and I stand for is having a healthy relationship and marriage. And maybe you don't have that person yet. You're going to have that person. That person is going to come into your life. And so we want to take you through some affirmations that we do as a couple as well. Mm-hmm. So about a year ago, we were going for a huge goal in our business. And we kept missing it. And it was a blow to my ego. (laughs) I was especially sensitive around it and was really trying to figure out like, what do we need to be doing differently? Like, what are we missing? And obviously it wasn't just affirmations that changed it. It was also action. But we wanted to take you through what we started saying every single day. And we were doing this five times in a row, five times a day. Like it was nonstop all the time. So can we take them through our affirmation? Heck yeah, let's do it. Okay, here we go. I am so happy and grateful. For my amazing life. For my incredible marriage. For my perfect health. For my unstoppable confidence. And for the abundance of time, money, and freedom in my life. We are business building and sponsoring magnets. People are eagerly seeking the life-changing opportunity we have to offer. 
These people are excited to work with us and growing their businesses fast, stable, and strong the same way we have. We are trifecta bonus earners. We are a nation. We attract the right people, resources, and opportunities. And we are an executive national vice president partnership. So we would do that all the time. And it was very powerful. And we would do it like Indian style, sitting knee to knee, looking into each other's eyes. It was so, so, so powerful. Five times in a row, five times a day. So if you guys are going for something or if you're working through something, you know, with your spouse or whatever, like get intentional on it. I know it can feel a little bit like weird, but it's, really been transformative for us. And then I want to take you through one more thing while we're still on affirmations. So a little bit of a personal deep dive here, you know, we're keeping things real with you guys and maybe we'll do a future episode on this or something. But Wade and I have been wanting to start a family. And a couple months ago, we decided let's make this happen. And we tried and we went for it. And we got pregnant on our first try, which is so amazing. And actually earlier this week, we found out that our pregnancy was not viable and that our baby does not have a heartbeat. And so I'm actually currently, I'm going to maybe get a little bit emotional right now, but um, as we're recording this, I'm still amidst a miscarriage, which is, you know, it's like a week or two long process and it's uncomfortable and it's painful um, emotionally, physically, all the things. But when we found out that we were pregnant several weeks ago, we decided let's start saying an affirmation or around us becoming parents. And so we're going to take you guys through that too. You ready? Yeah. I am so happy and grateful for my amazing life, for my incredible marriage, my perfect health, and the abundance of time, money, and freedom in my life. We are so excited to be welcoming a happy, healthy baby into our world. We are phenomenal parents and our sweet cam fits perfectly into our life. The The Crittities just got a whole lot better. (laughs) Oh, my heart. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I hope that gave you guys a little bit of clarity. You can always reach out to us on our Instagram, Getting Magnetic, or you can email us at gettingmagnetic at gmail.com. If you want to ask us about how to build your own affirmations, or maybe you want to tag us in them and, you know, post it on Instagram or Facebook and do the hashtag Getting Magnetic, we want to see what you guys, you know, are affirming into your life. Oh, my gosh. Let's spread positive affirmations in the world. That'd be incredible. And And affirmations are just kind of rewriting your narrative, right? Like correct or correcting course on whatever you want in your life. They're so strong. They're so powerful. So they have been a massive part of our life and us changing our lives. And it's something that we always recommend other people do as well. So building that in your morning routine is incredible. Moving on from that is the V in savers. We're back to the savers. And it stands for visualization. And you've probably heard of it before and it's like, okay, what exactly is that visualization, how we utilize it? Have it, has anyone ever made a vision board? It's pretty awesome, right? You start to think about what you want in your life and we get super tangible. We actually do it and we kind of set goals, whether it's one-year goals or five-year goals or bucket list items, things we want to do in our life. And we go, we seek pictures, throw it on a vision board and we have our vision boards in our office. And from there, right after our affirmations, we're in that state. And by the way, getting back to affirmations, at first, it might feel weird. And you might feel like, I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not fit and healthy and vital or whatever. I'm not a powerful leader. But as you start to say them, you're going to start to get used to that. And you're going to start to be like, yes, I am. Heck yeah, I am. One of our friends, Kelly Jr., actually, I love it. She's like, I say my affirmation. I'm so good at them. When my husband fights me, I'm like, how could you fight me? I'm amazing. I am an amazing woman and we just, I love it. But getting into the visualization, you you have that feel good state. After those affirmations, you're feeling good. Stay in your power stance and then go to your vision board and start to visualize what you want in your life. A big part of getting magnetic is attracting what you want into your life, is defining, is getting clarity and vision for what you want and attracting it into your life. So we put that up on a vision board and we go through And I know that I do this. I keep my song, my one man can change the world, my affirmation song going. And I just look through my vision board and I look through it all. And what's important is when you're visualizing that, don't just look at the picture of the dream home or the dream baby. Feel what it would feel like to be there in that moment, to be holding that baby or to be, you know, unlocking the door the first time to your dream home or getting that new puppy or hitting a milestone in your business, or whatever it is, feel the feeling of it. When you attach 
the visualization of it in your mind with the feeling and the emotion attaches to it, it multiplies the power of it. And so I like to think about, you know, when you think about the greats, when you think about the great athletes, a lot of athletes practice visualization. You know, Muhammad Ali was famous for calling what round he would knock out his opponent in. And then he would execute it on it. He would do it. And you know why? Because he fought that fight in his mind a thousand times before he stepped in the ring. So when he got hit with the left hook and his mouth was bleeding, he already felt that. He already tasted that blood. He already taken that blow. He already maybe went down in his mind, but he knew he was going to get back up because he's already played this through in his mind. So then by the sixth round or third round, whenever he would call him, he would knock him out. Or Kobe Bryant, the late great Kobe or Michael Jordan, you know, all of the game winners they, they hit and took. Was it the first time they were there? No. They had been there thousands of times, not only actually on the court and practice, but in their mind. They visualize these things. They visualize taking and hitting the game-winning shot. They visualize winning the championship. Tony Robbins went into the Golden State Warriors recently. He practices visualization with them. Visualization is huge. you got to visualize the outcome first. Write the last chapter first in your mind and start to visualize it. A great way how we do that is the vision board. So make one. Get together with some friends. Be like, you know what? Let's be dreamers together. Let's make a vision board. And, and you can use that as your visualization process in the morning. Can I give a little tip on vision board? Heck yeah. Okay. If you've never made one, this is what I want you to do. If you don't already have a Pinterest account, make a Pinterest account and go all wild on Pinterest. Start pinning things, start making boards of um, different things that inspire you, whether it's vacations you want to go on or gosh, your dream home, or I mean, it could be really anything and start, you know, putting that all out there and then printing those out and cutting them out and, you know, taping them to a board. I found that to be much more effective than like getting magazines and cutting it out because a magazine might only have a couple images or a couple quotes, a couple words that actually resonate with you versus if you're like custom building your vision board through images that inspire you on Pinterest. It's super great. A couple more things I want to say on visualization. Our good friend, Brianna Bosenko, when she does her visualization every day, she goes on like Zillow or redfin.com. Oh, yes. And she'll literally just like look at dream homes. Like that's how she does it. And that's totally amazing. I think that's a great way to do it. Another thing we do sometimes is we'll hook up YouTube to our TV and we'll go on and type in like, what do we type in? Abiza. Abiza. We type in Abiza mix and there's these great, soundtracks of all these images of different tropical and amazing exotic places in the world, especially where we are right now in the world, haven't been able to travel in quite some time with everything going on with COVID-19. And so that's been a way for us to like visualize and see like, you know, people on the beach or on the boats or drinking their cocktails on the beach. And we're like, wow. And we'll have it like kind of loud going on in the house while we're making our, our morning drinks, like our green shot and our tea. And that's a great way to visualize too. So there's so many different creative things that you can do. Find what resonates with you, but visualization is super powerful. Such good ads. Oh my gosh, so good. Okay, let's jump to the next, the E in the save verse. And that stands for exercise. And you might think, oh my gosh, in my morning routine, how much time do I have? Like, it's not necessarily going to do an hour yoga class or CrossFit or boot camp or spin or anything. It's whatever it looks like for you. It's just getting your body moving. It could be a five minute walk around your neighborhood. It could be a five minute yoga flow. Oftentimes I'll just throw on YouTube a 10 minute yoga flow in the morning and just get my body moving. It could literally be 50 jumping jacks. It could be what they call a Tabata workout, which is a four minute workout. Anything to really get your blood flowing and your body moving is huge. We prime our minds with meditation, with, with silence, with affirmations, with visualization. We then prime our body to match that with the exercise. So find what works for you. It's nothing crazy. It's anything from a walk to it. It could go be a 20 minute hit workout or anything in between. Walks and stretches are my favorite. <laughs> yep. You're more of the extreme guy. Okay. So now we're going to transition into the R savers and that's reading. Reading is huge. One of our mentors always says leaders are readers and it's crazy. Just a few short years ago, I was not a reader. I wasn't even an audibler. I just didn't have much interest in books. And it's pretty crazy to think a book is what, five or 10 hours of someone pouring their heart and soul into their story or something that they're knowledgeable about. Like in five to 10 hours, you could gain that knowledge. That's really what a book is. 
So we now do monthly book clubs. We'll download it on Audible, but we'll also get the physical book. And I love listening to Audible on like 1.5 and having the book in front of me. So my eyeballs are seeing the words, but I'm also hearing the author. So it's, it's doing both. I'm hearing it and my eyeballs are also seeing it. But take 10 minutes a day to read a book. Or maybe you come up with your non-negotiable. Maybe you read a chapter a day. Maybe you read 10 pages a day. Maybe you read 10 minutes a day. Figure out what it is that works for you. But make reading a non-negotiable for you. Do it every single day. A lot of times, actually most mornings, Wade and I uh, will pick a book every month. So we have a book that we read separately. But then we also have a book that we read together every month. And so in in the morning when we do our reading, we'll kind of popcorn read. He'll read a couple pages. I'll read a couple pages. And we read it together. And I love that. I think that, you know, doing this morning routine together too, we should probably touch on at the end, like it's really strengthened our relationship, Mm -hmm. our bond, our connection. But yet doing these things together, like when Sandy said, let's read a book together out loud and trade off. I was like, what? That's what? Reading to me is like reading a book in your head. But I realize it is amazing reading with Sandy and passing back and forth and you're more engaged. Everyone knows reading is great. Do you know the average CEO reads, I think it's 50 books a year or over 50 books a year. Meanwhile, the the average person in general reads about two. And I don't know about you. Actually, I do know about you. But Sandy and I, I don't think we really read before we started personal growth and started doing a morning routine, started our most you know recent business. What was the last book you read before we really got into reading? You know the answer. I know. I, I want the it's audience. It's Huckleberry to Finn in seventh grade. <laughs> it's really sad. I would start books, but I wouldn't finish them. So that, that story has changed over the past few years. Yeah. So leaders are readers. It's like Sandy said, condensing someone's life lessons into a book. You can learn so much from reading. I want to write a book one day. Let's do it. Okay. Should we get magnetic on that? Yes. Are you declaring that? Yes. It's happening. Okay. All right. We're going to go into the last one of savers. And that's S stands for scribing or writing or journaling. And this is huge. We recommend having a gratitude journal and writing down versus writing a list of specific things you're grateful for. Like I'm grateful for blank, blank, blank. I recommend writing a paragraph or a page and just let it free flow. Like, what are you grateful for? Why are you grateful for it? What does it make you feel like? Like just all those things. Maybe your scribing in the morning is writing out those affirmations. Maybe it feels good to write out, I am strong. I am teachable. I am an overcomer. I am a heart-led leader. Figure out what it is that you want to write, but getting that pen to paper, physically holding that pen in your hand and seeing your own handwriting on a piece of paper, not typing it out, but actually writing it, right? Or maybe it's writing a thank you card to someone that did something super nice for you and popping that in the mail and spreading joy and love and kindness or complimenting someone by writing them a little note that you're going to like leave on their windshield or whatever it might be, figure out how it fits into your life. But getting in the habit of doing that every single day. Anything I missed on scribing? Yeah, I love like we definitely mainly do gratitude, right? Or what we're grateful for in that moment, in that day, in our lives. And that is generally our scribing. Sometimes there's free form, just journaling thoughts. Like when you put your thoughts on the paper or what your day looks like, maybe you start to do like your to-do list or your goals for the day, your non-negotiables. But coming back to the gratitude, I mean, just touching on that, it has also been a game changer in our life because Sandy always says this, what you appreciate, appreciates. So when you start appreciating your partner, your healthy body, your car, you don't have to walk to work or walk to all these places, fresh air, clean water, the abundance of food in your fridge and cabinets, like your family, what you appreciate will grow and flourish. So especially if there's things that you feel like you probably aren't appreciating or annoy you, what if you leaned into expressing gratitude for them? The more gratitude you express, I promise you, it it will change your life when you start to express more and more gratitude. So that's the savers for all of our note takers. That was S for silence, A for affirmations, V for visualization, E for exercise, R for reading, and S for scribing. Again, we are no experts. This is just kind of what we've adopted, what we do. Like Wade said, it's totally strengthened our bond, our marriage, We love starting our day like this. Of course, there's a one-off day where we might not get through the whole thing or, you know, there's an unexpected something. But for the most part, like this is happening every single day. Yes. And to get to, you can do this 
in 15 or 20 minutes or even less if you want. You can do it in an hour or an hour and a half. That is totally up to you. Sandy and I probably spend, I would say an hour every morning about doing it. And honestly, we went from going back to running to the boat and waking up and snoozing the alarm. My day would own me. Like I would just respond to my day and react to my day. And my day would own me. Now we start our day. We start it intentionally. We pour into ourselves. We fill our own cup. And then we own the day. We're intentional about the day. So we prime ourselves for the day. It has been an absolute game changer. It is something we recommend to people. And we are excited for you guys to start it. If you guys want to see us in action too, I actually have an IGTV story up on my personal Instagram, which is at SandyClaw7 that goes into, it's like probably 15 minutes long. And we kind of share some of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you found value in it. And we're excited to hear how you start implementing in your Miracle Morning routine. Hanging out with you guys has been so fun. And don't forget, if you love this show, we encourage you to share. What if you subscribe to this podcast? That would be epic. What if you did a rating on it or reviewed it? That would help us so much. It would mean a lot to us. And don't forget, if you want to connect with us, you can connect with Sandy on Instagram at sandyclaw 7 You can connect with me, Wellness with Wade, or you can connect with the podcast at Getting Magnetic. Look forward to connecting with you guys. Have an epic day. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. So remember, you are magnetic.